I guess so. You're thinking hats are on today, so you are guessing it right. In humans, the whole family takes care of the mother, yeah. and we will not even know what to answer about that. So you are guessing almost everything correctly. I'll ask you this very simple question. I'll ask you a very simple question that in our society, you see, we eat different animals. Like hens and goats, etc. It's very common in Indian society, or for that matter, globally as well. And at the same time, we love uh, dogs as animals. Why is it justified to kill animals like hens and goats, but not dogs? That's actually very, you know, uh, what I should say on that. Even I love dogs. I like me and my friends. We have a pet as well. Okay. And actually, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't, you know, uh, eat animals and all. I think people should not normalize, you know, eating animals and non-veg. Actually, it is normalized everywhere. Like people here in South India, actually they eat. That's a, you know, they think it as a some cultural this thing. Yeah. Like many many religions, it's like uh, uh, to what slaughter. It's a very common yeah. thing. Yeah. So I don't think it's very nice. Like nice to kill yeah. uh, animals like that. So. Even in that's uh, every religion. It's even in Hindu religion we do that. Like uh, uh, where uh, in Kamakya Devi temple only I've heard that it is a slaughter they do before, uh, like as a offering to God they do that. But uh, according to me, it's not. <laughs> it shouldn't be. Yeah, it's, not, not. it's not justified. Yeah, and and there are multiple aspects to it. So one aspect is of course the slaughtering for religious reasons, and second aspect is, and I think more common aspect is consuming animals, eating animals on a regular basis, yeah. right? And that is true of wherever you go in India. Not so. Doesn't matter, right? You'll eat yeah. They they eat that they eat animals regularly. And you said you are a vegetarian. Even as a vegetarian, if you find your friends eating uh, hens and goats, there is some level of normalization in our head. If you come to know that someone is eating a dog, for example, like you will, you might walk out. You you might lash out at that person. But when it comes to other animals, irrespective of the fact whether we are doing it or not, but we are still yeah, we have still normalized it. Ki ha, this part of our life. So what do you have to say about that? Yeah. You know, I, I know it's a difficult topic, and the objective here is to make people think. That's the objective. So there's no right and wrong answer. I mean, it's it, these questions are like it may sound very weird and stupid, also, but these are important questions, right? Like why? Talk about some stuffs, and actually that creates a lot of questions in our mind that we'll have to talk about it someday, yeah. and we will not even know what to answer about that. Yeah. That's the thing. By the way, you're also vegetarian. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are vegetarians. So what's going on in your mind? Like, I'm asking you as vegetarians. You see your friends consuming animal flesh, yeah. and you are fine. Fine means you don't react to it. Yeah. But if you come to know that someone is consuming a dog, you will snap out immediately, right? Yeah. So why that difference from your end? Because I think eating hens and it's all those I mean, it's like a, it, it came from the Western culture. That's, I guess it came from the Western culture. It's very normal to eat this uh, hens or pigs and even pigs and all is fine. And then. Dog is something like uh, it's not very normal, no. Yeah. So we just think about it. Yeah, okay. Dogs as their pets, and you know, uh, more than even human beings, people like to be with their pets and dogs, and they love them a lot. And I think that's the reason maybe they avoid eating dogs, and people may react only for dogs yeah. and other animals. That's you know very normal. Like people every day eat it, and we don't even uh, you know object. There are shops everywhere. Yes. People just hang it everywhere, and we don't we don't even ask them because that's very common and normalized everywhere. I think that's. The reason for it. Very rightly said. You use the term normal. You also said normalized, right? And that is the reality of it. That it is happening at such a scale in front of us, right from our childhood, that we are kind of accustomed to it. But then a hard question is: Does it make any difference from, let's say, the viewpoint of the hen or the goat? <laughs> like a hen would ask you, why both of you are not speaking up when I am being slaughtered, when my rights are being violated? But you do speak up for our uh, other friends like dogs and cats. That's of course, a total discrimination again <laughs> for the animals. Of course, it is. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't have anything to say on this one because. No, but but you, you said you already said something very relevant, and yeah. that is actually the central theme of the discussion. You said discrimination, right? Do you know there is a term for this discriminating basis various species? Have you heard of the term speciesism? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah? Speciesism is nothing but. And unethical point of view that we as humans are privileged beings and we place different moral worth on different animals. In dog, we see cuteness, and hence we keep them as a companion animal. Even though dogs are also abused for their cuteness, by the way, that's why you would have heard of the phrase "adopt, don't shop," because the breeding industry, these uh, high breed dogs, they are abused a lot so that they could be sold off. And then the other animals like goats and hens, we see them as someone who is for human consumption. Right. So, do you think it's fair on humans' part to be such species and deciding the fate of these animals? No, no, no. 
No, I totally disagree on that, of course. And, and you both have been a vegetarian from childhood, right? Yes. Okay, great. So, so this was essentially the point of discussion. And since you both already said you are vegetarian and you are already there for the cause of animals, which I very much respect and appreciate. I'll just ask you this one question. Have you heard of the term vegan? Yeah, 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 yeah vegans. Yeah. And what's the dif difference between a vegetarian and a vegan? Vegetarians are basically, they eat uh, products from animals like yeah. milk and all. Vegans are like completely, they yeah. use uh, plants plant -based, and plants. Yeah. Plant-based products, plant -based. like plant -based. plant -based products. That's the perfect definition on the consumption side. And why do vegans don't consume, let's say, milk? Because they don't want to exploit any resources or anything yeah. related to animals? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. No, your thinking hats are on today, so you are guessing it right? Yeah. The, the, the question is, do you think uh, these cows and buffaloes are exploited for milk? Um, basically, I would not say they are exploited on it because they are producing something into the society. Actually, they are providing milk and whatever products we make through it. People are earning money. There are a lot of big industries through that. I think when we come to industrial point of view, it's uh, you know a very optimum use of uh, an animal. But, 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 but even the, the, the person who's selling goat flesh can say the same thing, right? They are providing their flesh as a resource and they are supporting the whole industry. That is, killing animals is different than using them as a resource. Like uh, using animal products is different than you know using a complete animal for eating. Okay. I think that's the different thing in that. Uh, do you think it's a possibility that we are probably not aware like what actually the exploitation is? Because if vegans are giving up milk, then they would have seen something in the process. Do you think there is some gap there that we are not aware of what's happening in the milk industry, dairy industry? Yeah, maybe. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Since you are guessing almost everything correctly, I'll ask you this very simple question. Okay. That uh, when do you think a mammal gives milk? Like any mammal, when does a mammal gives milk? Science student. <laughs> I don't, I, when, it's, it's like, when it's lactating. Lactating, um, right? And yeah. Why do they lactate? Why do they lactate? It's like they give birth to, uh, for the young ones. For, for the young ones. No, it, it might seem like a silly question, but it's going to drive a very important point. And and it's like we don't have to be a science student, even we know, but yeah, we, we just haven't thought of it in a in, in a long time. But yeah, essentially any mammal gives milk when they like during the lactation period and who's that milk for? For the baby, for the infant, which means it is happening right after pregnancy. Now imagine I'm the dairy farmer. And for me, like you rightly said, these animals are resources. Right. Crossbreed is, yeah, that is also there, but before that, a very simple thing that these animals are impregnated right at the time they hit puberty and then they are impregnated again and again and again and again. I'm the business owner, that's my resource, I try to optimize for it. The moment one pregnancy ends, they immediately prepare them for the next pregnancy. Would you say that's exploitation? Yes, right? of course that in, is. In humans, the whole family takes care of the mother, they get maternity leave if they are in corporate, right? Because it is such a taxing process physically and emotionally but these animals are subjected to pregnancy cycles right continuous pregnancy cycles and then in general a mammal produces milk in that much capacity which is needed by the baby right so if we are drinking the milk what are the babies drinking oh exactly i didn't know about all this yeah. but then i feel that's the exploitation again and it's, it doesn't end here these farmers they want them to produce more and more milk so they keep them on an unnatural diet they also will give them some injections and some meds so that their milking production increases because again coming back to what you said that they think of these animals as resources the baby can be a male or a female yeah. what do you think is the dairy farmer doing with the male calves meals huh? meals yeah, so they, those are yeah, slaughtered, slaughtered. Oh my gosh. Because they can be used for uh, like uh, crossbreeding, so they give them injection yeah. so that they uh, the strength increases and they yeah. use for crossbreeding. They are using used for hybridization techniques yeah, yeah. and all. Yeah, they can be used for that. Though they, they would only need one male yeah. to okay. to impregnate rest of them, so they are sent to slaughterhouse. But then in India, very few people consume buffalo or cow flesh, right? So you can reconcile the fact by checking that India happens to be one of the largest beef exporters in the world. So all of this surplus that's coming from business, business right? Yeah. And then what do you think is happening to the mothers once she can't give milk? Again, export. Right? And that's the reason why a vegan doesn't consume any animal product because you already captured it because they are used as resources. And whenever we treat someone as resources, we exploit them. Yeah. yeah. I'll just introduce myself and then we'll end this conversation. My name is Shivam and I come from a hardcore non-vegetarian family. And then I became a vegetarian in 2019 and uh, then I learned about the dairy industry and all of this. So that's when I became a vegan and then I realized that I should educate more on this. So I quit my corporate job and now I work for an animal rights organization and I go to colleges and go to corporates and do lectures on this topic. And to amplify our message, sometimes we come on street and talk to open minded, compassionate, logical people. Right. Because a lot of times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's our target audience. Like 
the reason why we are having this long conversation is because you were receptive had you gone into the mode nahi nahi to this are right and we are yeah. then i end the discussion it's not point it's not uh, worth my time right the aim of this conversation is to request you to think more on this that's the only thing that i'm asking you and then uh, there is a huge uh, vegan community in india more so in bangalore and uh, feel free to uh, connect with them what's going on in your mind did you expect such a conversation uh, no i got to know a lot about yeah. you know all those yeah. uh, industrial scenarios i was not knowing about all those things so maybe it will question my mind and i'll yes, yes, start yes. questioning stuff and yeah. i'll know more about that yes, of course yes. and, and, and my humblest request to you is that there are many arguments against veganism yeah. like almond milk is costly and uh, yes. multiple arguments against veganism my humblest request to you is that please don't assume that whatever argument comes to your mind is the achilles heel of veganism there's a counter argument in detail for that as well in fact i have a, a blog where i keep writing about this i'll share that it with you do check that out be honest when you do the research right so it's very difficult to change our habit which we have been brought up in a certain way so yeah that's was a decent conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. you're doing well yes okay thank you so much for your time